okay, so I know what you guys are thinking. It's been two weeks since we've done this, and I hope you guys have missed me as much as I've missed you. So uh, we'll kind of leave it at that. But, you know, two wins in a row. We're uh, playing pretty well as a team. we got to, you know, keep focused. And we got a team coming into town that's obviously won two of their last three. Uh, they're talented. Um, they're feeling more and more confident. They had a phenomenal special teams game on Sunday, four days ago, against uh, Buffalo. Surprise on side that they got. 101-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. You know, they got, they got some good players. They have some good specialists. They have some uh, guys that are playing hard. They're a young team on special teams like we are. So they play with high energy and effort, and they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. So we're going gonna to have to get after it and, uh, you know, play our game and, and help our football team win. So when you see them successfully execute that surprise onside, how much do you emphasize that, and how much do you guys have to be on alert? We, we actually emphasize that every week, no matter who we pl we're playing. Um, against a team like Miami that's, you know, two and eight. I'm not going to say they don't have anything to lose because it's the National Football League. Everybody has something to lose, and they're a prideful team. they got a good coaching staff. They're out, their special teams coordinator is a very good coach. Um, you know, you have to be ready for that every week, but obviously this week there's more an emphasis because they have, they've tried three, and they've gotten all three. Two of them, they were offsides, and uh, finally the one they got the other day, they weren't offsides on that one. Uh, but they faked a punt successfully. They faked a field goal successfully. They have the kickoff return for a touchdown. They signed my old punt returner, Marcus Sherrills. Um, it was really weird seeing him in a Miami Dolphin uniform wearing the number 48 instead of 35 in a purple uniform. Uh, but I know what he can do, and he's, he's still got it. Great quickness. Uh, he'll make great decisions back there. Um, so, you know, specialist-wise and, 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 you know, what they have bringing to the game on Sunday, they're, they're, they're pretty dangerous. So we've got, uh, as normal, we have our work cut out for us. Season is Kadero Hodge having for you. You've been talking about you know how great he's mm -hmm. been for you, kind of quietly on special teams, and now he's given the offense a jolt as well. You know, it's funny. Like a lot of young players, he he started out really good on special teams. He got more and more involved in the offense because he's a good football player, good receiver as well, and he's had not had been as productive. Um, so it, my challenge to him and to other guys like him is when you start playing more offense and defense, but we still need you because he's only playing what twelve to fifteen plays in offense, so he can still be a four core player, four, uh, phase player. Um, so those guys still have to show up in, in, in the special teams phases. And he's a young guy and, and you know, he's, he's looking around going, hey, man, I got a chance to be a receiver in the NFL too. So I wouldn't say he's lost focus because I think he's a pretty focused kid, uh, for, pretty focused young man. So my challenge to him and, again, to guys like him that play more on offense and defense is to keep playing at a high level to help us win games. And, and he'll do that for us. Has uh, Miami done that all year or is it only as a last resort their special team? Uh, fakes and all. Well, I think when you're struggling as a team, you got to try and find different ways to win. And, you know, they pick the right spots. I'm sure their head coach is very much involved in when they do it. And he's got a lot of confidence in their guys. And like I said, the two of the surprise on sides that were executed perfectly by Miami that they recovered, but they were they moved early. They, they left early. And that's kind of what you have. The guy who's recovering the kick, who's designed to recover the kick, he's the one leaving a little bit early because he wants to make sure he gets there. And, and that's what it kind of it kind of got him a couple of times. But the kicker recovered, right? Right, that's the, the slow roller, a middle bunt, we call it. They, they executed that one perfectly. It was a great kick, and kicker did a nice job of grabbing it and going down before he took a shot. What's your uh, read as a, a team leader and a coordinator on uh, where the uh, mess at the end of the Pittsburgh game left the team mentally and then what needs to be done to uh, make it something that galvanizes rather than you know, erosion? Freddie's done a great job of – Making having all of us understand, coaches and players, that we got to be one and zero this week. It, we have to move on. We won a really hard fought game. Um, we're excited about Miami coming into town and, and for the next challenge. And and I think we'll become closer as a team because of all the adversity. And, and you know, it's it's us against the world. And let's go uh, let's go win this one and, and continue our our uh, you know continue our season in a positive manner. And and like he's been saying the last few weeks, let's just go one and zero this week, and then worry about the next one when it when it shows up. But we have a really really important battle this week, and we got to get after these guys. Question about uh, Gillian. In in terms of uh, some of his uh, balls going into the end zone and uh, you know coming close to uh, yeah. you know being uh, great punts and, uh, and and not quite, is he still at a point where he's uh, inexperienced? And the precision it would take to uh, to nail those at a no, certain it, spot. No, I'll be honest with you. He had eight punts the other night, and seven of them were outstanding. Two of the ones that were touchbacks, one went into the end zone. We need to find that ball, and that's something we emphasize a lot, and we emphasize again this week, especially in practice yesterday. Um, and then the one was a penalty. I mean, we, it was a perfect kick. It died at the three yard line, and, and inexplicably, we touched the ball after going out of bounds. And that's something that we pride ourselves on being a smart, situational football team. We talk about it all the time. 
me talking about it and our players understanding it and being focused on it, being a young team, that's no excuse. You know, they have to they have to execute that. And I can't be on the field for them, obviously, thank goodness. Um, but at the end of the day, they, they know the rules. They know their job. They know their assignment. And in order to play fast and execute, they, they have to focus. And our focus level has got to be higher and higher and higher. I think Freddie called it earlier this week, hyper-focus. We have to – the focus has to be at an all-time high in every situation because every situation could be – whether you know, the determining factor in whether you win or lose a game. That was a that was a, a tough penalty for us because they got the ball at the 20, and I think they had a few penalties on our defense. And and you know that their uh, Pittsburgh went down and scored, and made it a 14-7 game. So it's inexcusable. I couldn't believe it happened. It's not going to happen again. And and we just got to learn from it, and move on. Like any young team, we got to learn from every one of our mistakes and every everything that we do well. And we did a lot of really good things on Thursday night, and we got to build on those and continue to get better. Question relates to Jamie. Is he becoming uh, real good? What he does? He is, and, and I, I've told many people. And I think I've told you guys before. We're just scratching the surface with this guy. I mean, I'm starting to find out some of the different things that he can do with the football. I think he had a real good night the other night. He's be, he's better as a holder. Uh, he's better as a punter. Uh, the situation at the end of the game, you got a one seven five get off, which is outstanding. When we knew they're bringing pressure, I mean, and they fair caught it at the ten, almost almost dropped the ball. So he's doing a really nice job with all the different situations. Very coachable, starting to understand the game better, and he's getting and he's helping us helping us win. What's going on with the Bermuda Triangle down there at the dog pound end when people try to try <laughs> to Bermuda kick Triangle? Out. That's actually a good way to put it. Um, yeah, everybody, our opponents have had problems. You know, Jamie, excuse me, uh, Austin's, all his misses have been in that end of the field. And it's funny because, you know, you talked to Phil Dawson before the season. I got a lot of information from Phil. Obviously, he spent many uh, great years here. And um, he never gave me that indication that the dog pound was that bad. But he did say once the ball gets up in the air, the winds don't always do what the flags are showing. And, and I think that's what's happening. And Austin does such a good job of getting the ball up in the air. One of the things I liked about him coming out of Oklahoma, his timing was good, his elevation was good, and obviously he was very accurate. Um, he does get a lot of great elevation. And there's sometimes when he gets up there in those crazy winds, and, you know, the second kick, the first kick, he pushed right that he missed the 50-yarder. He hit a great hit, drilled it, and it got starts going down the middle. All of a sudden, the wind just took it, and it didn't seem like it was that windy. So, you know, we sent him down there again yesterday, like we always do, and, and he was, I think, 12 for 12 in the dog pound end. It wasn't that windy yesterday, but that gives him confidence going forward. Uh, do these numbers, do you chart those numbers? They have it like 12 out of 21, all kicks to that end zone. Kevin missed. Both teams. Yeah, he's crazy. It, it's not field goals. Yeah. Like you, like uh, yeah, I, mean, I just look at our, what our guys have done. Um, but yeah, all five of his misses, I mean, you know, knock on wood, he's made every other kick in every other stadium and the other end. Is there another place in the league that bad is the Heinz Field? I think Heinz Field, probably. Now, I haven't played there or coached there a lot, you know. Um, so I think the one end there is supposed to be pretty, pretty bad as well, uh, especially this time of year and on into December. Um, but yeah, that's something we just got to keep working on. And, and sending them down there and getting them confidence because you know, he's a confident young man and he'll bounce back and he'll do well for us and he's helped us a lot so far this year and he'll continue to do so. Phil talked to him before the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, did, did he teach you about the Dawson flag on the oh, Southwest yeah. and, and, act, and how to read it, like, you know, against the Steelers? Again, the tassels on the top of the uprights weren't moving, but that mm -hmm. flag was, it was pretty much, was blowing. you know, blowing. So, I mean, you just you haven't learned how to read that flag yet, or Austin well, hasn't. Well, I don't think it's how he hasn't learned how to read it. it. It comes down to not overthinking it, to be honest with you. And you know, Phil, Phil just said, hit a hit your true ball, hit a true ball, and and sometimes you can't really you know determine what the winds are going to do or do or whatever, and guess what they might do. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you just got to you got to practice it. You got to go down there, and you you got to keep working on it. Pre-game is always important, and he struggled. Austin struggled a little bit in pre-game, as their guy did. Uh, on that end, uh, so we knew it was going to be an issue, and we just got to learn how to kick the right kick at the right time. You mentioned the touchdown that Miami had in the last mm -hmm. week. Yes. Um, he also did another big long one. So, what kind of challenge is that for you guys as a whole? And then on the other end, are you still frustrated that you haven't been able to get one giant return yet? The, uh, to answer the first part, Akeem Grant is an outstanding kickoff returner. Um, I know he's a young guy. You know, Baker Mayfield, I guess played with him one year, Baker's freshman year at Texas Tech. And he told me some things about him yesterday. I mean, he's, he's confident. You can tell the way he runs. Extremely quick, 
you know, you got to throttle down under control to, to get him tackled. We talk about tackling with your feet first all the time, and that's kind of our coaching point with him. He can make you miss in a phone booth type thing. He's so quick. Uh, but he's also explosive. He can break tackles. He's so strong for a smaller man, and he's got exceptional speed and explosion. Uh, so those are the things that make you uh, concerned about you know him. And the second part of your question, I don't I don't know if frustrating is the right, from frustrated by that. You know you want to have big plays, and you know we had one against Seattle, and we really haven't broken a big one uh, since. And then punt return, we haven't really gotten going. Um, we have two young returners that. You know, we have to continue to work and continue to gain confidence. And, you know, we're going to continue using Dontrell as punt returner and, and, and Tavier as our kickoff returner. And Tavier was one block away from a big play on the on the left return last week. I mean, we're, we're close. We just haven't gotten over the hump yet, and that's what we're looking for. When you look at guys like Tavier, mm-hmm. um, you know, Cadero when he was doing primarily, but what goes into making a guy like a great special team Want player? Want to. you got to be a good enough athlete, um, you know, fast, strong, tough. Um, smart. We need to play a little bit smarter, obviously. Um, I think the guys that really want to be good special teams players are the ones that are the best special teams players. And, and the example I used from two weeks ago is Lorenzo Alexander. Here's a 14-year veteran who made his name, made his mark on special teams, went to the Pro Bowl for, I believe, Arizona as a special teams player, then becomes a starter at linebacker and doesn't want to come off the field. There's something about that young man that makes him special in terms of being a, a core contributor on special teams and an outstanding linebacker. You know, he comes to mind. I've coached several guys like that um, who have either been really good returners and a really good gunner like uh, C- Cordero Patterson. Um, you know, great receiver in Percy Harvin, who was also a great kickoff returner. Marcus Sherrills, who's a role player for us in Minnesota, who's now obviously in Miami, who was a great punt returner and played on the other three phases, was the best gunner we had year in and year out. So those guys had something special that their, their mind, they want to, their heart, they have a passion for the game. And those are the type of guys that make great core contributors on teams. At uh, the end of the uh, Pittsburgh game, all the mess there. How jarring was that to you, and uh, what's your sense on uh, how that kind of rolled through the coaching well, staff? Well, I think you guys have covered that enough the last couple of weeks, or last week. Um, honestly, I don't want to go there. I'm focused on the Miami Dolphins. Uh, we've been tasked to focus on the Miami Dolphins, and that's what we're going to do. We won a game. It's a hard-fought game, and uh, I'm excited about this weekend. From the standpoint, like Mayfield yesterday, everybody's wondering how the team's going to respond. When, when Mayfield was asked yesterday, he said, uh, we'll find out Sunday, and it sounded like he truly was curious. I would agree 100% with Baker. We will find out Sunday. We know that covering onside kicks is really hard at the end of games now because of the rules. Mm-hmm. Is it harder during on a surprise effort because of the rules, or is it the same as it used to be? Um, I think the surprise part is probably even harder to get those because you got eight guys in the setup zone, and it's how you deploy them, how you set those guys up, and we're going to have to change what we do a little bit based on what Miami does to take that away. Because I'll be honest with you, you don't want them to kick it. There's an opportunity for them to recover it if they do kick it. So we're going to try to take it away by alignment. We're going to try to take it away by focus, and if they kick it, we're going to get good field position. That's our, that's our stance on that.